pancreatic pseudocysts are frequently found on imaging follow-up of pancreatitis and may be themselves asymptomatic for some time. When they present, they present by mass effect, compressing the surrounding structures, biliary obstruction, gastric outflow obstruction, or second infection. In these situations, some form of intervention has to be done. In the past, complications of surgery and mortality were high when dealing with such cysts. Percutaneous drainage was frequently done, however, it was found that the recurrence rate was quite high, up to 71%. To do something around this, you can put a percutaneous catheter drainage to continuously drain the cysts. However, in this situation, complications are also not low. They can lead to fistula infections and bleeding. Endoscopic guided cystogastrostomy have been performed for quite some time. By this, you create a fistula tract between the pseudocyst and the gastric or duodenal lumen. Limitations of such endoscopic procedure that it's a blind approach. Perforation and hemorrhage are not rare. Recently, EOS guided cystogastrostomy have been the gold standard in this by using a linear echo endoscope and puncturing the cysts and doing the insertion of the big teal catheter into the stent and recently putting a metal stent have changed markedly the outcome of these patients. I'm going to present a case in which we use this EOS guided endoscopic intervention in creating a fistula tract between the stomach and the cysts. The patient is a 43-year-old man who presented with a six-week history of pancreatitis complicated by a big pancreatic pseudocyst. He complained of abdominal distension, mostly in the upper abdomen, and persistent postprandial vomiting, suggestive of gastric outflow obstruction. Examination showed a big bulge in the digastrium and left upper quadrant, confirmed by ultrasound and CT to be a big pancreatic pseudocyst with a diameter of 12 centimeters. We used an echoendoscope, Bentex, the linear one. We used a 19 gauge fine needle aspiration needle to pass a 0.035 inch guide wire after puncturing the cyst. Then we punctured the cyst with a 6G cystotome. Following this, we dilated the tract with a balloon dilator, and then we inserted big tail stents. That's the video clip of the patient. First, we assess the endoscopic picture and looking at the bulge of the cyst into the gastric lumen, <coughs> choosing a point of entry with echoendoscope. That's the cyst in EOS, endoscopic ultrasonography. We assess the cyst again for its size as well as the thickness of the cyst wall we are going to puncture. And looking at the entry site and trying to find an area in which there is no vessels intervening between the puncture site and the cysts by using Doppler scan. Now we have chosen our point and now the 19 gauge needle is about to puncture the cyst. Now we see the, the needle inside the cyst. This is 19 gauge needle which can accept a guide wire. You can see in a moment the guide wire passing inside and we coil the wire inside the cyst. You can see now the wire going on inside the cyst. We confirm this by radiological assessment at the same time. 
Then we start using a sister tone, six French, in creating, increasing the size of the fistula. Sometimes you use, after this, six French sister multiple Sohendra dilators, after which we insert an 8 to 10 millimeter balloon, as you can see here, to dilate the track more. Now you can see the balloon traversing the puncture site. And now the balloon is being inflated. And you can see the site of entry of the balloon. And the balloon is during dilation. And the waste is going to disappear. after complete inflation of the balloon, enlarging the puncture site. Now there is no more waste, as you can see, with the balloon totally inflated. Now it's time to remove the balloon after confirming the dilatation by fluoroscopy. Now we deflate the balloon and we pass a double big tail catheter over the guide wire. To continuously drain the cyst, Now, as you can see, the size of the cyst is going to decrease. Now, we're in the step of inserting the stent. You can see some fluid in the gastric lumen as well. Then we can monitor this by endoscopy during the final stages of stent insertion. You can see the fluid coming after under pressure from the cyst. And that's the final stage of the stent insertion. Actually, the patient on the follow-up did quite well. His previous symptoms subsided and is expected to remove the stent in a two-month time after a CT follow-up of the cyst to see its complete resolution. Thank you.